Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of Second Swing Thoughts here in the Second Swing Studio. And today, joined by Pierce Lanou. Uh, if you're not familiar with Pierce, he is the writer of the Sunday Swing. Um, it's up on SecondSwing.com right now, recapping the Tour Championship. And that's why we're gathered today because we wanted to sort of recap the entire season a little bit. Um, you know, as a certainly a, a fascinating one, obviously with the discussions and. Um, the, you know, rumors, the decisions made by the tour and, and other tours to come together. There's more uh, more dynamics with this that will evolve here in the future. But um, with the FedEx Cup now wrapped up, and I know they have a really short off season here, so I think they ramp back up. At least the, the full season starts in January, I know, but I know there's some kind of fall events that'll matter for a lot of the players on tour. So, um, but... There's, you know, the Tour Championship to discuss. We'll start with there, Pierce. Um, the top 30 in the field at East Lake. It's been a tradition for years and years now. Um, I just, I love it. I think it's a perfect course for an event like this. I think it's challenging, but the way it played this weekend, there was birdies all over the place. Yeah, I think <clears throat> East Lake is one of those courses where it's like, if you get good scoring conditions like they did this week, yeah. it's just it turns into like mm-hmm. a, a literal birdie fest, and we saw that on on the weekend especially. A lot of guys shooting mid to low 60s on the weekend. I think Tommy Fleetwood was one of them. He went like 65, 66. Mm-hmm. Obviously Victor Hovland to 63 yesterday, and I think 66 Saturday or something like that. Xander had a 62 yesterday. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for uh, for excitement on Sunday, especially, and you know when you get a field like this where it's literally the 30 best from yeah. the whole season, you're gonna have you're likely gonna have a good good leaderboard and, a, and an exciting finish. So mm-hmm. right. that's that's what I like about the Tour Championship is 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 the field. Yeah, Even though oh, it's yeah. small, it's it's a tightly you're, contested. You're always tournament. watching a golf shot by one of the better players from the season. Right. It's not the best. You know, I mean, yep. you have um, uh, two years in a row, Scotty Scheffler has entered the Tour Championship as the number one player at the top of the standings. And so with the staggered start, you know, starting at 10 under par. And from there, you know, you go down to number, you know, 30. And it's just those 30 guys competing. And as we've seen really the last few years now, I mean, the starting score Surely it's a benefit for those top guys, but you're not really out of it by mm-hmm. any stretch. If you're starting two, three, four under, um, you're very much in the tournament and can make a run at it. Just because with the field so limited in size, you get hot one week. You don't have to beat nearly as many people, so you see some guys rise up really quick. Yeah, we saw that this week on Thursday when Colin Morikawa started the week, I think, at one under. Yeah. And he came out Thursday and shot a 61 mm-hmm. course record. Yep. And was immediately top of the leaderboard mm-hmm. in contention. And then um, I think he had another bogey free 66 or 65, something like that on Friday. And then kind of came apart a little bit on the weekend. But yeah, just a, just an example of a player that maybe is seemingly out of it that certainly isn't mm-hmm. thanks to some, some great rounds on, on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, so we got to start with Victor Hovland um, on an absolute tear here in the last... Yeah. I guess if you want to count, you know, Sunday from the BMW Championship and then into the Tour Championship, I mean, his last five rounds of golf have been just phenomenal um, and striking the crap out of the ball. And obviously when the putter gets hot for him, as we've said several times on this show, talking about majors and his performance there, and he's been so close in several of them now. Um, you, you see, you know, a week like this doesn't really – surprise any of us uh, even a stretch going back to last week doesn't really surprise anybody but um it's cool to see him kind of build on that and now i mean we had glover back to back now we got hovland back to back and um guys that strike the ball really well have always been awesome with their irons and then if you get that putter figured out i mean you can make some serious noise yeah i mean what a what a crazy finish to the season the last four tournaments they only had two winners i know yeah and i think i saw on the broadcast they said that was like the first time that that's happened since like the 1950s or something like that, where there was two back-to-back winners on tour. So pretty cool, pretty unique. Um, and yeah, Victor Hovland, I mean, we've been banging the Victor Hovland drum yeah. the whole season. And for me, it, it was a matter of when, not if for him. Yeah. I mean, the guy is 
obviously one of the most talented players in the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when he when he can figure out the short game, he's he's really tough to beat. Mm -hmm. I think I think he's gonna win a major or two in the next in the next year. It, I mean, the same the same thing. It's a it's a matter of when, not if, for him in the majors, right? Mm -hmm. And he's had several close calls. A couple of them this year where. I think it's maybe just like one round kind of takes him out of it, but you know, he plays three really, really good rounds outside of that. And if he can put four solid rounds together in a major coming up at some point, I mean, really any of the, any of the, you know, these major tournaments that could be, whether it's the open where you're playing in the wind in the link style or you're playing at Augusta, any type of golf course he seems to be able to thrive in. So yeah. he just hits the ball so well that it doesn't really matter what the conditions are or what the, you know how firm the course is um it seems like he can be dialed in and then as his putting has improved a ton um you see that he's suddenly so much more consistent up there in the top five top ten and even you know despite how strong the field might be with these events obviously the tour championship top 30 from the season or these major fields um he's continuously rising to the top yeah i'm really excited to see how he kicks off next year because this could be like a like a Scheffler, yeah, that's true. Tiger type run of golf for him. If you look back to the Memorial, which was his first kind of big win yeah. on the PGA Tour, I think that was in June, um, and then coming into the end of August here with back to back wins in the in the playoffs. I mean, if he can ride that momentum over into next season, he he's got a chance to do something pretty special and maybe maybe push for that number one in the world spot. Yeah. Was he now four, I think? He's either three or four, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah There's still, I think, the big three, Scheffler, Rahm, and uh, Rory, yep. the top three, but he's, yeah, that, he's right there. That European Ryder Cup team is starting to look pretty scary yeah. with some of these guys. Yeah, they're going to be a problem know, for Really sure. improving. And I also want to give a shout-out to the Ping I-210 Irons. Mm -hmm. So um, I know I, I have to mention every time we talk about Hovland, he's one of the best iron players in the world, and he uses an iron model that's probably five to almost six years old now, mm -hmm. I-210s, um, and I play some in my bag, so I have to give the give him the credit there, but they're, uh, they are they still work for him. Yep. I mean, at the highest level in golf, he's delivering every weekend, yep. iron shots, throwing darts. Um, that's yeah. Victor Hoblin. Yeah, he hits irons like like nobody else. I mean, he's you, you can compare him to mm -hmm. like Scheffler in, in oh, the yeah. ball striking category. I mean, right. those guys are kind of in a tier of their own, and Morikawa, too, when he's when he's yes. on, is another one of those guys with the irons that's just like mesmerizing to watch. Mm -hmm. Every shot doesn't leave the flag stick. Um, yeah, Victor Hovland has kind of risen into a very, very high tier yeah. of the golfing world. And mm -hmm. I think I, I see no reason why he's not gonna not gonna continue that next year. No, he'll, he'll be, he rightfully will be you know, among the favorites in all the majors for next year. And mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm sure he'll be a problem for the U.S. in the Ryder Cup here as well. So Yeah, it's going to um, be fun. One other guy we got to talk about, I think, is Scotty Scheffler. And, and you know, I, at some point here, we're going to get to, um, we'll kind of do, we each give a couple winners and a couple losers from the entire tour season. But in terms of the FedEx Cup, the, the tour championship in particular, you know, it's, it's another, it's the same old story with Scotty. It's just, he hits the ball so well and just can't quite putt it well enough. Um, but it was, it, he, I always thought he was going to have kind of this edge to him with the, with this week, given what happened last year in the tour championship, having that big lead on the final day and letting Rory kind of uh, come from behind and, and take it. So uh, his performance, I mean, it, it's the same story. I, it hits the ball well off the tee, hits the well, or the ball well with the irons and the wedges and just the putter just, he tried, he went back to the blade it looked like this week, and he, he's clearly searching for something that will yep. work. Yep. Yeah, he, I think, you know, near the top in the ball striking categories, and he was dead last in putting. Mm -hmm. I think he lost five and a half strokes putting this week. Yeah. So that's really just been the story for him this year. I mean, if you if you look at his season collectively, still a really good season, obviously. Oh, yeah. He won a, won a designated event at... at uh, the waste management, mm -hmm. and then obviously won the players. I mean, those are two, two really, really good wins. But yeah, if you were to watch his tournaments all year, you probably would have thought he'd won five or six times. So 
Yeah. The expectations for him, I guess, are so high that the yeah. season maybe feels like a bit of a disappointment for him. Um, but, I mean, he had that crazy top 12 run that just came right, to an yeah. end a few weeks ago. And, yeah, I mean, what he's doing tee to green is is very special. Yeah, it's fascinating that he, if you think about the landscape of Player of the Year award, right, I think, you know, they'll, we'll find out about that shortly here. Um, but the... He, for as good as he, you know, statistically, he's it's one of the best ball striking seasons ever. T to green, yep. I mean, he was gaining like two and a half per round almost, which yeah. is like prime Tiger level stuff. <clears throat> yep. Um, and then he's not even going to be probably a top two or three candidate for Player of the Year. I mean, he had Rom with his four wins and a Masters tournament win. Yeah, you forget that he won four times because yeah, they were so early. You have Hovland who won three. twice at the end of the year. Yep. He had the Memorial win. He won some big events and he contended well in the majors. So. These guys have a better case for player of the year than, than Scheffler does, despite Scheffler hitting the ball perhaps as good as anybody has ever hit the ball mm -hmm. from tee to green in a season of golf. So it's uh, in one way, it is a bit of a kind of disappointment to see where Scheffler ended up, despite, like you said, that huge top 12 run he had. Yeah, and it's kind of shocking that he's over two now in the FedEx Cup when he comes in at, at number yeah. one. I thought this year he – I kind of was in the camp that you were in where he – he wasn't going to let that get away from him again. But, yeah, it was just, I mean, he had two good scores and yeah. two not-so-good scores. And in both, all four rounds, he really struggled on the greens. Yeah. It was just, uh, I think it was Thursday and Saturday where, or maybe Sunday, I think it was yesterday. Well, I think the three the, over. the way the course played was ripe for someone to come from behind and get hot and yep. win it. And I think if it did play tougher like it has some of the past few years, I think you would have seen – Scotty have a lot better chance to win at this. It just because the way he plays right now, it's you, you need him to kind of putt well to mm -hmm. go low. Otherwise, he'll hang around even par most of the time. Despite even if it is a tough setup, he's that's kind of the way his game is right now. He's going to hit fairways, he's going to hit greens, and he'll probably two putt for par on a lot of those. And which is fine if you have a lead going into the tournament and it plays tough and a lot not a lot of guys can chase you. But when it plays soft and you know scorable like Eastlake did this weekend, where guys like. Hovland and Xander Shoffley can can take it deep a few times, uh, then you're susceptible to losing that lead pretty quickly. So um, that's also another name I wanted to mention, by the way, Xander Shoffley. Mm -hmm. Every single year at East Lake, he is among or the top, if not the best scorer for that specific tournament. Yeah. Um, I think it runs back like four or five, six years now. Yeah. Every single it's year, like, he's like the best of that week's score, you know, not counting the starting scores. I think he's up there in right. the top five every time. I think it's like he is currently like the streak is continuing of like consecutive rounds in the 60s yeah. at a tournament or something like that like he's got the record at East Lake and I think it's still going it's a, it's unbelievable yeah. i mean it's 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 like a clockwork every year mm -hmm. it's like oh this is Andrew Shoffley week here we go you know yeah and sunday i mean the 62 yeah if Hovland just doesn't shoot 63 <laughs> i know Xander i mean could have stolen right there. that thing i mean he did everything in his power obviously you know Victor Hovland is a, a deserving winner and you know, he did what he had to do. He made mm -hmm. seven birdies yesterday. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, Xander at that course is just lights out. It's crazy. Yeah. It's actually, if I'm trying to think of, like, you know, players that go to a course and play well at that course every time. You know, obviously there's, like, Tiger with a few places. Um, Bay Firestone Hill. <laughs> and Bay Hill and Mirfield and all these other. I mean, that's different. But, like, you know, like, um, Webb Simpson at, like, the Wyndham Championship at Sedgefield mm -hmm. is one. You know, he's always up there. And um, this one is, a, a, you know, Xander at East Lake is another one where if you're, you know, playing your daily fantasy, for example, I mean, that's a guy that you're going to want on your team yeah. uh, every single time at that at that course. So one of these years, Xander will come in with, you know, five or six or seven under. He'll be up a little bit higher in the in the standings, and he'll be the, the favorite yeah. to take it home. Yeah, he actually, I think, finished second. Mm -hmm. in the in the final standing so he made himself an extra i don't know six or seven million bucks yeah something like that yeah, yeah these guys get some decent money for making it yeah. this far don't they yeah uh all right so what i want to do now is kind of just go over i think we'll each give two winners and two losers i mean winners and losers being used sort of um kind of generally because he, some of these guys did win or did not win throughout the year but um, so we'll start with you and kind of we'll start with the winners. So maybe give just a couple of names, um, guys that you know, maybe exceed expectations this year. Yeah. Looking back at this past PGA Tour season. Right. Yeah. I think 
for me, the most obvious one is probably Wyndham Clark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, picked up the the win at uh, Wells Fargo, which was a designated event, yep. and then backed that up about a month later with uh, the U.S. Open win and finished strong at the Tour Championship this year. Yeah, I he think did. he was well, inside. 65, I believe, on Sunday. <clears throat> yep, I think he was inside the top five in the final standings as well. So really, really impressive stuff from him. I mean, like last year, if you'd asked me about Wyndham Clark, I would have had no idea yeah. kind of who he even was. Mm -hmm. So for him to kind of find something in his game this year and just played really impressive golf, I think in his career he's made like 15 million bucks now but like 10 of that 15 yeah. is this season yeah so i mean that tells you right there the kind of year he had mm -hmm. the the two big wins and then a lot of other high finishes oh yeah i mean it's it wasn't just flashing the pan a few times yeah I mean, he was consistently top 10 top 20 leaderboards this year which yeah. i think we talked about it too right after he won the u.s open where he wasn't i mean wasn't consistent at all in the PGA Tour the last couple of years, he was, you know, he you'd see him frequently on Thursday and Friday towards the bottom. Um, yeah. You know, he's four or five over after 16 holes, and you kind of write him off already. But, I, and I'm I'm not saying this is the sole reason, but I I'm not I'm not going to dismiss it either. He did recently switch to Titleist. Um, prior to this year, you know, he was driving the ball really well, putting the ball really well, but that approach game was practically near the bottom statistically. Mm -hmm with his irons and wedges. And this year he flipped that script completely. And so uh, kudos to, to him for, you know, focusing on that and improving it, seeing the results happen. Yep. Uh, yep. Really good stuff. And now he earned himself a chance to compete at the Ryder Cup this fall. So yeah, yeah really, uh, really impressive mm -hmm. season. For yeah, that'll be fun to watch him at the Ryder Cup. Yeah. I think that'll be good. He's um, got some fire in him. I think he'll, I think he'll do well yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, right, I'll give a winner here then. Uh, and that's going to be Lucas Glover. Mm -hmm. And I think, wouldn't have even thought of him about a month ago now. No. But um, he finished really strong. He had a really good performance. Was it Barbasol or Barracuda? One of those two events. Barbasol, yeah, I think. It might have been both of them, um, honestly. So he, where he, I think he entered the playoff, ended up losing in a playoff, but clearly the game was there and there was something, a brewing, if you will. Yeah. And then um, had the big win at the Wyndham where he really needed to win to get into the yeah. playoffs and then follows that up with another win the following week. Um, that's awesome for him and to see, you know, you could kind of tell in the reaction afterwards, especially at the Wyndham where that was uh, a big win for him and his family. And so to see that, and I know, um, I know it's been kind of a tough road for him with the putter as well. Yeah. And so to find something that worked for him yeah. uh, and to see it come to fruition that way, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Great story. Just another example of like a, like a late career revival. Yeah. Like we keep seeing this trend, like Lucas Glover, Ricky Fowler, mm -hmm. Jason Day, all guys who did that this year, who their game has kind of been in shambles for years now. Yep. And all of a sudden they have this resurgence and, you know, Ricky and Jason both got back in the winner's circle. And then, yeah, Glover with the back-to-back -back wins here at the end. Really cool stuff. Yeah. I think uh, it, Glover's a guy, I mean, I think here's, possibility for a Ryder Cup pick. I don't mm -hmm. know how, you know, strongly Zach Johnson feels about it, but yeah. people forget Glover is a major champion. I know. He 2009 won a US, US Open. Open. Yeah. Um, it's one that I think it was Beth Page maybe, but one that not a lot of people remember. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember it. It's he he's a, he's a major champion and I mean, I know his game has kind of up and down if you will since then, but uh, really cool to see him finish the season strong. Yeah, for sure I agree. You got another winner for me, Pierce? Yeah, I'll go uh, kind of off of the the beaten path here okay. and and say a name that a lot of people might not know very well, and that's Adam Shank. Yes, I so like that one. He, I had that in my, yeah, in my thoughts, too. Yeah, yeah, so he had, like, a sneaky good year. Yeah. I think he finished ninth in the final FedEx Cup standings, uh, and this is a guy that turned pro in 2018. I think his career earnings are just shy of $10 million, but he made about five this year. Yeah. I think seven top tens, two runner-ups. He had the playoff loss. Mm -hmm. I think it was at Charles Schwab. Yeah, I think John Deere was another one. He was and, up there. Yeah, and then it might have been the Valspar or mm -hmm. John Deere, something like that, that he was runner-up as well. So, you know, he didn't get the win this year, but he consistently was placing top 20. Yeah. I think he had like 10 to 15 top 20 finishes along with his seven top tens and two runner-ups so yeah made himself a bunch of cash this year 
Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you get into East Lake, you're doing something right. Right. Yeah, totally. And to be in the top ten of that list for like a guy you might not have ever heard of, is yeah, pretty cool. Well, I was surprised because like I remember look, going into the playoffs when it was you know the top seventy to get into that first event, and I was looking at the standings, and I couldn't believe where Shank was. I think he was yeah. like twenty second or twenty third <laughs> going into the, just quietly. Yeah. yeah, he's you know he's piecing together these you know seventeenth and. 14th place finishes over and over. And then once in a while he pop up to the top five. Then he'll contend one week. You know, it's. I think that's where he made a ton of improvement. Is maybe and he'd always been a really good kind of ball striker. He'd always made a bunch of birdies, but it seemed like there was also a lot more bogeys yeah. and sort of bigger numbers yeah. that would sort of hinder him. And I think this year that was probably if you were to ask him again. I don't obviously I don't know him, but I I think looking at his you know statistical chart, I think those bogeys and bigger numbers were decreased quite a bit this year and that's yeah. what kind of kept him up on those awards. <clears throat> yeah I'm sure his bogey and double bogey avoidance stat probably improved a lot this yeah. year um, and yeah a guy that makes a lot of birdies he's usually just one of those guys that's kind of overshadowed by all the big names you know especially when he's getting into these big fields he's not going to be a guy that's really talked about or thought of as a guy yeah. that could win the tournament so um, yeah just just a, a guy that it is one of those cool stories that you might not know of, but mm -hmm. really, really, really yeah. good year for him. Yeah, so I'll go, I'll take one here and I'll go kind of, I'm going to hit two for one and actually kind of three for one if you think about it. So I'm sort of cheating, but <laughs> I'm going to go with the, the jailbird versus putter. Okay. And I'm going to go, because we talked about Wyndham already. He's yeah. using that. A yeah. couple wins for him. Uh, but then Ricky Fowler, mm -hmm. um, his resurgence <clears throat> and how he, like you mentioned, his game was in the gutter uh, the last couple of years, just lost with everything. And I know the putter is only a piece of the way he rebuilt his game, but you know, he's now, I think it's going to be probably a shock if he doesn't make a Ryder Cup or become a Ryder Cup captain's pick yeah. for Zach Johnson. Really good season, very consistent. I know he had a pretty good string there too of top 20 finishes. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so really good to see him back. And I know that's great also for just the, I guess the sport. I mean, he has such a pull with fans that, um, that's it's awesome to see him back towards the top of leaderboards consistently, and then Keegan Bradley as well. I'll throw him in there. Really good season for him. Yeah. Uh, and to see him win you know, at, at Travelers was a lot of fun. I know that's the big event for him. That was sort of the the golden goose for him, if not for a major. You know, mm -hmm. he wanted to win that one, um, sort of in his backyard. So that was really fun to see. And he has also another player that hits the ball really, really good all the time, but has kind of putting inconsistencies and so this jailbird versa kind of helped both of those guys pick that up yeah so i mean all three of them made it to the tour championship yeah. and there was actually a fourth guy that i saw using the jailbird this weekend i it might have been adam shank yeah could have been i'm not sure but there was another guy out there that that's that switched to one yeah and i think it was shank i could be wrong but there was at least four of them in the in the top thirty this week that that were rocking it. So I mean, it should be noted that is a putter that is I think almost ten years old, mm -hmm. and so uh, cool to see those guys kind of rock with that and and um, it works. Yeah, there's something to it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, uh, did we do we do all four winners, didn't we? Yep. So now we yep. go to losers. Losers. Um, I'll let you kick off the losers if you've okay. got any in mind here. I know there's a couple big ones that we can yeah. kind of highlight for sure. So Yeah, I mean, the, the obvious one is probably Justin Thomas. Yeah. Um, he didn't win this year, correct? No. No, no wins. Um, and that's coming off of a year prior where he won, you know, PGA Championship. And then was the players the year before that? Yeah, so was, players was 2021. Yeah. So, like, so he did win the PGA. Um, right. But, but basically, since the 2022 PGA, he hasn't yeah. really been yeah. You know, so a yeah, just kind of a weird year for him. He never really there was glimpses of it yeah. where it was like okay, like yeah, JT is really good at golf, mm -hmm. but he just couldn't really put four rounds together. He missed a lot of cuts. He didn't I mean he's one of those other guys that's known for his ball striking and his iron play and. That really took a hit this year. I don't know yep. why or how. Um, that's just kind of the way golf works sometimes. I mean, we see it all the time. But, yeah, it is really surprising to me. The ball striking really fell off. And another guy that struggled immensely with the putter. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see it 
we've kind of seen that with him over the past couple of years even when he's been winning it's like okay yep. like he's you know he's tinkering with stuff he's you know it's a big talking point for him is the putter so um yeah he's he missed the fedex cup playoffs by granted it was one spot yeah, it was one spot um, and it was the fraction of it know, was about he, a millimeter shot, probably the, yeah, pin, yeah i mean so yeah he he could have he could have made it but obviously obviously didn't and now you know the Ryder Cup question for him is is really up in the air as well. Right. So. Well, and, and to think too, it, it took him playing, you know, a few extra events that he probably <clears throat> would normally play yep. to get a few extra points to give him that position to ultimately have a chance there at that chip on eighteen um, at the Wyndham. So there's there's uh yeah you're right like it was he would usually put up like a 67, 66 in one of these events. Right. But there'd be 72s, yep. 73s. Next round would pull be him out of contention three or four and, over. Right. So there's, you wonder, I'm very curious. I know we're at the point now recording this where I think the, the Ryder Cup captain's picks are, you know, going to happen here soon. They're going to be announced. And I'm curious about JT. Uh, I think based on play this year, you probably think, no, mm-hmm. he shouldn't be on the team. But then if you think about past experience with the President's Cup and Ryder Cup and playing on the team, yeah, he's, been really you know, good. he's been really good. So. We'll see where, where Zach Johnson goes. Yeah, it's a hard line to kind of draw. And I've heard a lot of rumors that he will be on the team. But, yeah. I know, mean, I, not, it would surprise me that he, if they ended up not picking him, um, I think it would also be good for entertainment's sake to have, mm-hmm. him, have him there and yeah. a little bit more intrigue from, you know, the American fans. But, Definitely. Um, but, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm curious to see how he <coughs> responds next year and, how, if you can kind of get back to old GT, because yeah, that's always fun. So. Certainly. Um, I'm going to go with a loser, and it's going to be actually Scotty Scheffler's putting. I'm going <laughs> I'm going to focus on the okay, putting. This is putting. <laughs> um, because it it really feels like it was a waste of a year. I mean, yeah. This is a you, you look back at players that have T to green been as good as Scotty was this year, and they win five, six, seven times in a year, even yeah. more. Like Tiger's case or VJ Singh back in '04, right. won nine times. Um, it just feels like, I mean, if, if Scotty Scheffler was an average, average putter this season, um, he probably wins another event or two. He would he have might won have, at least he, five tournaments. He might year. have won a major through that. I mean, there's, yeah. it really just feels like there's a big missed opportunity for him. And I, 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 I know, again, he made a bunch of money this year. He played really well. He had that string of top yeah. 12, so he can't be that upset. I, I imagine he's not totally beating himself up for it, but there are just, this this could have been a very like historic type of year where we compare it to we really truly compare it to Tiger. Yeah. Well, Prime. Rory did that this and, week. Yeah. They asked him in an interview, I think, before the Tour Championship, mm-hmm. and they were like, he basically said that yeah, like Scotty's ball striking this year is comparable, if not better, than Tiger in two thousand. Yeah. He said like that's like the benchmark for these mm-hmm. guys out there is. 2000 Tiger Woods ball striking and Scotty yeah he gave that a run for its money and yeah, yeah some some would argue it was even better mm-hmm. so and then to only win twice out of that when I mean he, he was in contention quite a bit even on his weeks where he was putting poorly you know he was kind of lurking on the leaderboard yeah. and just you're sort of waiting for him to get hot and make a few putts yeah it just never really happened so I I'm very very intrigued by what is going to happen now. He tried with the the tailor made spider mallet um, for a week or two. You know, he, yeah, he I know he mentioned weeks, he really wants the firmer kind of feel to it, the milled face, which tailor made with their spiders. Typically, they don't. They have that insert there that's a little yeah. softer. So, I wonder if he and tailor made will work something out. If he'll stick with his Scotty Cameron uh, Newport two blade. I don't. I'm curious. I mean, it's, yeah. it's well, one of those. There's so many players that have tried different things. Maybe he'll go with an arm lock, or maybe he'll go with the long putter. I can't imagine him with with anything non-conventional, but that's probably just because I haven't seen it. Yeah, no, um, exactly. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna take a guess that he'll he'll spend a lot of his off season trying to figure that out. Yeah, because it's obvious to everyone mm-hmm. the the kind of player he is, and if he oh, can yeah. just get that putting a little bit better. He's gonna win a lot more golf tournaments. Yeah, it's just fascinating to see, you know, I, I the the I guess accounts I follow on Twitter, it's like a you know, some stat gurus, if you will, and they're always like, here's Scotty Shuffler's ranks in the air. It's like T to green first, off the T first, approach first, and all these things always first, and then it's like putting 150th. And mm-hmm. it's just uh and we we've we've discussed this exact dilemma like several times 
throughout the year about maybe the one particular event where he was last in putting but first everywhere else. And uh, it, again, feels like a really missed opportunity for him, but hoping it turns around next year because he still could be a, an all-time player. Yeah, I mean, I think he probably already is Yeah, considered an all-time player, but, I mean, he's got a long career ahead of him. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm – I'm not too worried. I think he'll figure it out. But mm-hmm. yeah, time will tell. Yeah, definitely. All right, one more loser each. Loser. I I don't know if that's the right term for this. But mm-hmm. Disappointments maybe for me. Um. Yeah, I mean, I want to say Rory. And that's more so just because you know the majors. He didn't win a major again. Yeah. And that's kind of been the narrative with him for seven years now something like that like when is he had chances when are you going to win another major and it seems like three years in a row now he could have easily won one right there i mean he contended in all four this year yep and just for whatever reason he seems like he's one of those guys that always has like one round or one nine even Mm -hmm. that kind of ruins his chances yep um i think back to the pga um, I believe it. I believe this was Sunday. There was a, a second hole on Sunday. There was a. I think he was still trailing, trying. To, he would have needed to kind of come from behind to win that one against uh, Kepka. But second hole, the pin was tucked way kind of on the right side of the of the green, and you know they, these kind of wedgy, feely mm-hmm. shots for him have been sort of an issue. And yeah, this it was one of those approach shots from like 90ish yards, and he went right at the pin and missed it probably. You know, 10, 15 feet right of the pin, which in most cases is not too bad, but it was one of those where you miss right and you're down in the hole in this bunker yeah. and it's an impossible up and down. And so things like that, those little mistakes that um, in a major are just potentially a two-shot yeah. swing there. For, for if sure. he maybe plays that one 10 feet or 15 feet left of the pin, he's got a nice birdie look, maybe he capitalizes, and suddenly he goes from you know almost playing himself out of the tournament to being right there on Kepka's tail. Yeah, I mean, the margin for error on tour is very small Mm -hmm. and at majors it's even smaller just the way the courses are are set up and yeah there is definitely a lot of those wedges i remember you know multiple of those in the majors this year where it's like he has 80 yards and he'll miss the green and make bogey yeah it's like okay if you just knock that on the green two putt it's like okay and then you end up losing the tournament by one stroke yeah so i I, think back to i think it was the is it last year at St. Andrews even? I think he had, yeah. I think his last round he had he, he hit every green or something like that. Yeah, or 17, he 18 like greens didn't and, make a putt the entire and day. And shot two under or something like yeah. that. You know, it's it's going to happen. I, right. I do believe that it will. Um, it's just crazy that it hasn't to this point. And mm-hmm. you have to sort of wonder for him if it's something mental or if it's, you know, what what is the yeah. block at this point that, yeah. he's, that he's dealing with. And, and I definitely don't think he had a bad year. Like, he had a ton, a ton of good finishes. Oh, yeah. And made a ton of money. But probably it's like, hit the iron shot of the year at the Scottish. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> that on the 18th awesome. there. But it's just kind of like the similar case with Scotty. Like, we hold those guys to such a higher yeah. standard. Like, it feels like Rory should have won five times. Yeah, it and really does. And he got does. just the one at, at the Scottish. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think he'll be he'll be back stronger than ever and again another guy at the Ryder Cup that has you know cheering for, cheering for Team USA yep. I'll be scared of him so yep I'm sure he's gonna be a force like yeah. he usually is at the Ryder Cup for sure um, one guy I'll say is a disappointment and I don't think I mean we've already mentioned his name for you know his round at the at East League but it seems like he had a bit of a down year Colin Morikawa mm-hmm. um, you always think of him as this world class you know nobody's better than him with his irons and he sort of had a down year a little bit overall with his game. I think he only ended up with like six top tens throughout the season, including the Tour Championship. Um, and it was, again, I, you're so used to him being consistently up there. And it, yep. seems, it seems like he's a lot more hit or miss now than before, yep. where he'll have completely off weeks and miss the cut comfortably. I saw a lot more of that this year. So I, I he's still a world-class ball striker. I do wonder, this is a more of a theory than anything, but I do wonder if his distance being much shorter is kind of maybe actually hurting him more than we think at some of these tougher, longer courses. Mm-hmm. Now. Yeah, I I noticed that yesterday when I, or it might have been Saturday, I caught a couple hours of the of the golf and, you know, when he was playing with Hovland, and Hovland's 
he's not a bomber, but like I mean, he hits it. Oh yeah, he probably hits it further than the average guy out yeah. there. But I mean, he was out driving Morikawa by like twenty or twenty-five yards, yeah. like consistently, and I just. It's like I didn't realize he was that short. Yeah, he's, not that he's short. Like he's hitting oh, he's, a two ninety. He's probably about tour average, or maybe just right. barely under tour average. Right. But to to really contend, especially at these longer courses, you know, you, you you play at, you know, some of these par seventies and seventy ones are now 7,400 yeah. yards, and that I mean a lot of these par fours then become four hundred and eighty, four ninety yards, mm-hmm. even five hundred sometimes. That's a yeah. lot for yeah. someone like him who's playing a you know, 285 cut off the tee with driver in most cases. Right, and I guess it might be kind of hard to say that his distance is the sole reason for that, just because we see rounds at these courses, like at East Lake, he shot 61 on Thursday. Yeah, right. Didn't make, like, he didn't make and a East bogey. East Lake is some cakewalk. <laughs> he didn't make a bogey until Saturday. Yeah. It was like midway through the round Saturday, he made a double, and that yeah. they were like, yeah, he was the last player that was bogey-free. And right, had right. like 40 holes, whatever. Um yeah, I think for him, it's just a matter of consistency. You kind of touched on yeah. that already, but it's like he had like a handful of top tens this year, but he also had a handful of like of like uncharacteristic bad missed cuts. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of a weird mixed bag for him this year. You didn't really know what you were gonna get. Mm-hmm. He never felt like a safe play anywhere. Yeah. Like okay, he could come out and win, but he might miss the cut by five. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I felt with him most yeah. weeks this year yeah so i mean and again that's you know it, the, it's it's all about the standards that we ha- kind of set for some of these guys like scotty shuffler's putting and colin morikawa were my quote-unquote losers of the year but mm-hmm. they both you know were highly you know finished highly in the effects cup right or yep they made a good chunk of change this year so there's kind of there's levels to it but i it's sort of they definitely fell short of my expectations you know yeah so but it's uh, it's funny because we now get to kind of turn the page here, and we've got this whole new format for the for the tour structure now, and we've got yeah. the Ryder Cup coming up, which we'll definitely have a uh, an episode on that to kind of break that down. Um, but it was a fascinating tour season, a lot of fun yeah. that uh, was had, a lot of fun to see some of these guys sort of emerge from the abyss, if you will, like mm-hmm. the Ricky Fowlers and the Jason Days out there, the Lucas Glovers, and then uh, now we're hoping kind of Justin Thomas can do the same thing yeah. next year. And yeah, fascinating season should be just as fascinating of an off season. It should, yeah. Um, yeah, like we've got the Ryder Cup, we've got the Solheim Cup, mm-hmm. we've got all of the, like you said, the the tour format stuff and the the scheduling next season and how's that going to work, um, you know, with the competing tours and it's just going to be it's going to be a lot of stuff going on in the golf world yeah. in the next three to six months. So looking forward to it yeah well uh listeners and viewers can stay tuned because we will have Ryder cup preview um episode coming up here shortly so stay tuned for that otherwise pierce thank you for joining um recapping and, and you know really weekly sticking with us here for the sunday swing if you're not reading that you should um keeping us up to date on what's going on on tour and stuff so we really appreciate that and um also <laughs> listeners if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your uh, favorite platform or if you're watching also make sure you subscribe to the channel for all of our other YouTube content. So, Pierce, thanks again. Yeah, another fun year.